Welcome back to Relax with Animal Facts. I am Steph Wolf, and today I am going to be learning with you about our furry, scaly, or possibly even slimy friends. And in today's case, it is definitely going to be a furry friend of ours, because we are covering the oh-so-wonderful warthog. This, of course, is a very special listener episode dedicated to Ruby, who wrote in and requested this awesome creature. To request a creature of your own, you can go to relaxwithanimalfacts.com and click on the Animal Request tab. For four extra Relax With Animal Facts episodes a month, you can go to patreon.com slash relaxwithanimalfacts and get all of that for only three cents a day. A huge thank you to George Vlad for the ambiances in this episode. It is because of his work that is linked in the description that we can go to some of the most remote places on Earth. If you are new, welcome to the Animal Podcast family. If you are returning, you know what I am going to ask of you. I have three primary exhortations for you. The first is that you put on a pair of versatile shoes. We are certainly going to be needing those for where we are going today. And my second encouragement to you is perhaps the most important, and that is to realize where you are carrying any tension. This might be in the legs, in the head, in the shoulders. Regardless of where it is, I want you to do your best to relax those parts of your body. You can bring up in your mind some jello and do your best to impersonate it. It is hard for us to relax when we are stiff as a board. And my final exhortation to you is that you give your mind permission to wander and journey with me into an African savanna where the warthog resides. These African savannas are home to some of the most amazing creatures on our planet, and the one we are looking for today, I would estimate, is a bit underappreciated. Its common name is the warthog, but its scientific name is Phacocorus africanus. As is nearly always the case, their scientific name is coming from Greek or Latin roots, and so oftentimes we can kind of discern what an animal is just by its scientific name. The former word is actually just two Greek words smashed together. Phacos means a mole or a wart, and koiros means a pig or a hog. The latter portion of their scientific name, Africanus, is of course referring to the African continent on which they are found or rather, more specifically, where they are native to. And so, putting this name together would give you a mole pig, or rather, a wart hog. These are herbivorous mammals. We will go a little bit deeper into their diet in a moment. They will weigh from between 120 to 250 pounds, which is about 55 to 113 kilos. They are about 2.5 feet tall, around 30 inches at the shoulder, making this animal quite a compact one. Taxonomically, or the way in which warthogs are classified, are as members of the same family as the domestic pig. But if you were to look at two different images, one of a domestic pig and one of a warthog, you would notice just how different they really look. I have seen one thing quite common to this animal, and it is the visceral response of, ooh, they are not the prettiest animals. They have heads that are both very large and very flat, and their heads are decorated with these protective bumps, and these bumps are the ones that have earned them the name Warthog, as they resemble, quite interestingly enough, warts. One thing that discerns them from those domestic pigs we all know and love are four sharp tusks. They have hair that is few and far between as far as their head goes, but they do have a thick mane on their backs. 
Now despite their appearance with four sharp tusks and having a countenance that is not very friendly, they are just grazers. They eat things like roots and plants and grasses, using their pig-like snout to dig around, and so those signature tusks of theirs are mostly used for defense. Now where we are today, in the savannah woodlands of Africa, is just one place we could have found this creature. The common warthog is also in the grasslands of Africa, and they are even found on places like Mount Kilimanjaro at elevations of over 3,000 meters or over 9,800 feet. There is also the desert warthog that is found in eastern Africa, including Ethiopia, Somalia, and Kenya. An interesting fact about the warthog is its relationship to the aardvark. We have covered this giant anteater on the show before, and as we learned there, they make dens for themselves. Well, though the warthogs dig around for roots with their snouts, they prefer to just take up home in the dens of aardvarks. Though, just to be clear, they are going to be using those dens which are empty and have been abandoned by the aardvark that has dug it. Now we have talked about symbiotic relationships in the past. Symbiosis is defined as the close relationship of two organisms that are dissimilar. Nature has many ways by which it brings about this fine balance, and the complex, intricate, or perhaps sometimes simple relationships between different animals are a huge part of what makes an environment an environment. Now, if you ever forget what symbiosis means, as we have learned before, look at the roots. Symbiosis has two Greek words that come together, sim and bios. Bios, of course, means life. Biology is the study of life. And that prefix, meaning that little bit that is attached to the front, sim, is a Greek word that is used to connote togetherness. This is why, if you sign up to go see a symphony, you're not just going to hear one violinist. You're not just going to hear one person singing. Phone in the Greek means sound, and so a symphony is a coming together of sounds. And similarly, a symphony is the coming together of living things. It is describing the relationships of different life coming together. But there are different kinds of symbiosis. Just because things come together doesn't mean it is going to be a good coming together, at least not for both parties. There are the big three, which is mutualism, commensalism, and parasitism. Mutualism, for example, is a symbiotic relationship where both of these organisms benefit. Parasitism is a symbiotic relationship where one organism benefits, but to the harm of the other. And then, commensalism is a symbiotic relationship where one organism benefits, and the other just doesn't benefit at all. And this is the kind of relationship that is describing the warthog and the aardvark. The warthog benefits from the hard work of the aardvark in the digging of a den, it gives the warthog shelter and protection, but in the warthog going into an abandoned hole, the aardvark itself is not affected at all. So we can think of this as the aardvark doing a bit of charity work for the warthog. The warthog also has an important relationship with different birds. Oxpeckers and other species, along with the warthog, form a mutualism kind of symbiotic relationship. In the wild, you have tons of insects and little tiny creatures that embed themselves in the hides of the warthog. And so these birds will just hitch a ride, and in addition to cleaning them from these different creatures, they get themselves a meal. Now if the warthog wants to get a little bit more relief from the insects, at least a short-term solution, they will roll around and wallow in the mud like pigs. I don't mean that in a derogatory way, it is only very descriptive here. Given their environment, water can be a little tough to come by, but they are quite capable of going long periods of time without consuming any water, and this can be as long as several months. This means that whenever they come upon a body of water, 
They will both try to drink as much as they can and enjoy a bath to gain some relief from the hot sun. But let us go back to those dens that the aardvarks have built for them. The warthog will use it, of course, as shelter from the hot sun, but also as a shelter from predators. These warthogs really are compact. They are like little springs and can run up to 30 miles per hour, around 48 kilometers an hour. They will use that top speed to run into their dens, but not head first, but rear first. Why else would they do this other than the fact that they have these huge tusks up front ready to defend? It is like the reverse of a porcupine. A porcupine, when threatened, will turn around and show its rear to its enemy. That is because that is where the danger is, and in the case of the warthog, their tusks are their quills. But there are times in which the warthog will opt for fighting rather than fleeing. It has fairly sharp teeth despite its diet, and it will slash intuitively with their tusks. And do not at all underestimate these creatures. Those tusks are sharp, those teeth are sharp. They can take down animals much larger than themselves if they have to. When warthogs travel together in groups, this is referred to as a sounder. These sounders will typically consist of one or two sows and young offspring. It is the males that usually travel alone. One way that you can perhaps distinguish the male from the female warthog is by looking at their face. Those protective bumps that are unfortunately referred to as warts are going to be more frequent on the faces of males than females. This makes sense given that the boar or the male warthog is going to be engaging in fights a little bit more frequently and in turn be in a larger need to protect their face. One important fact to be mentioned is that while they are herbivores, during times of extreme scarcity, when there is little to no food available, they have been seen to eat meat, but they will never hunt. They will instead scavenge around finding worms or bugs or other animals that are not alive anymore. The families of warthogs can be quite large. Female warthogs can have up to eight young at one time, but that is just the maximum. They will typically only have between two to three. Piglets or baby warthogs will weigh only between one to two pounds or 450 to 900 grams. This is right when they are born, according to the San Diego Zoo. They will become mature at around 20 months of age, and the females often stay with their mothers even as adults, while the males will go off on their own. The average lifespan of this creature is between 12 to 18 years in the wild. Now let us talk about the name of this creature, the warthog. We know, of course, why they are called the warthog at this point, given that their face is decorated with those warts, or rather, protective bumps. But let's explore a little bit of the etymology of this creature's name. Let's look at the word hog first. This word was used in the way that we understand around the mid-14th century, and it was used to describe a swine. And the word wart comes close to us from Old English, but reaches back perhaps all the way to the Latin weruca, which is swelling or wart. And maybe a little fun fact, the phrase warts and all that maybe you have heard, it is usually used in a context in which someone is attempting to say, let's make it real or let's be honest. So let's say someone was making a movie about themselves, and they said to the director, I want you to show all of my life, warts and all, meaning the good and the ugly. This usage is attested from 1763 and is supposedly from Oliver Cromwell, a very historically important man who was involved in much military conquest. Many people in the medieval period would pay to have their portrait painted. They didn't have iPhones, they didn't have Instagram accounts, and so they had to do it the old-fashioned way. But frequently, they would tell the painters just to do a little bit of airbrushing, make them look a little better. But Oliver Cromwell said to his painter, 
paint me warts and all. And so they did. If you search up that picture of Oliver Cromwell, there he is, his warts and all. Something very atypical for that time. And now let us move on to the review of the show. This review comes from Jordy, who is writing all the way from the United States of America. And Jordy writes, I think I have listened and re-listened to every episode. I love it so much, such a gentle way to go to sleep while learning a few fun facts about our friends. Such a great option for nighttime when you're calming down. Thank you for sharing your craft. Thank you, Jordy, for the abundance of kind words in your review. I'm so happy that you are part of the show, and that goes for you listening as well. You are a part of what makes the podcast special, or rather, I would say, you are the reason this podcast is special. All of your listenership makes me a guy that's not just talking about animal facts to himself, and rather makes it a journey together. Leaving a review is one of the biggest ways that you can help the show, and so if you haven't already and the show helps you, I greatly encourage you to take a couple of minutes and leave one. It can be a one star, it can be a five star, I just cherish the feedback. Now we have been attempting to do dad jokes every episode, but unfortunately I couldn't find one for the warthog that wasn't just awful. I know that part of the fun of dad jokes is that they are awful jokes, but when a joke is so bad that I myself shrink from it, I think I will spare you. If you would like to request an animal for the show, you can do so by going to relaxwithanimalfacts.com and clicking on the animal request tab. To help the show continue to help people from around the world, you can go to patreon.com slash relaxwithanimalfacts, and for less than a cup of coffee a month, you can get an extra four episodes a month. A big shout out to the work of George Vlad who gave us the ambiance for this episode. I have linked his YouTube in the description and I encourage you to go subscribe and check him out. The facts that were used in this episode came from SeaWorld.org, LiveScience.com, NationalGeographic.com, ShamWari.com, and EtimOnline.com. Those are also all in the description, and I encourage you to check them out. What an amazing animal we have learned about today. The warthog, a creature that is perhaps not the prettiest to the common eye, but a creature that has wonders all its own as we have learned about today. Thank you for taking the time to join me on this adventure, and I look forward to the next adventure together on the next episode with the next animal. Take care.